so this is a modern rabbit farm and this is a rabbit in this video i'm going to be telling you guys step by step ways to start a successful rabbit farm so if you are someone interested in starting a rabbit farm and you don't want to make any mistake while starting through making your cage getting your rabbit briefs your feeds and some other things you need to get while starting your rabbit farm if you don't want to make any mistake when starting your rabbit farm this particular video is for you so watch this video to the end so that you learn with us as we speak to you so if this is the first time coming across our channel here in our channel we teach you basically how to become a successful rabbit farmer a successful rabbit breeder and also a pet owner we also do videos on other livestock farming extensively so let me start from the very basic thing when you want to start a rabbit farm the first thing you need to make for instance is your rabbit cage so here is a six room rabbit cage and as you can see the way we actually built this cage we built it in such a way that the floor of this cage here is wire mesh then when the rabbit poops they are dropping spores to this particular zinc here in this way your rabbit is always very very clean whereby anytime your rabbit poops their droppings does not stay with them take a look at this particular rabbit you can see how clean the rabbit is looking yes it's as a result of because her cage is actually very very clean and no droppings stay with her come let me show you how inside their cage actually looks so yeah, they are going to be seeing what i'm talking about as you can see the floor of their cage is wire mesh so here in this floor of this rabbit cage when one day poops their poop drops through this particular hole or any of these holes and comes to this particular zinc here where you need to just sweep it very very easy here in this zinc there are droppings falls on it in such a way that when you want to sweep it just for you to sweep from this zinc down and it's very very easy this kind of cages are called self-cleaning cages whereby your rabbit droppings does not stay with them if you build a cage whereby your rabbit droppings stay with them you are going to be seeing a lot of diseases in your rabbit also your rabbit are not going to be looking very very clean imagine you going and staying in the same place that your poop is that's not really really healthy so that's why we came with the kind of cage whereby the rabbit droppings won't be staying with them their droppings will be going outside their rabbit uh, outside their cage so if you want to make your rabbit cage make sure that their droppings go through and drop in the zinc either you want to make a wooden one like this or you want to make a galvanized one like this any one you want to make is actually very very good but make sure it's a self-cleaning cage and if you are starting up your rabbit farm i would advise you to start with maybe a four room rabbit cage especially for those of you guys that want to start small because if you are starting a rabbit farm i would advise you to start very small like two females and one male so that as you are growing then you are learning a lot of things from them so you don't get to make a lot of mistakes because there are a lot of things you need to learn as a rabbit farmer and we have a lot of videos here in this channel that can teach you many things you need to learn about rabbit farming so you need to start with two females and one male rabbit when you get these two females and one male rabbit do not keep them together it might be very very hard for them to cross each other so separate your males from your female so that anytime you put in your female into your male cage the female rabbit the male rabbit will be very very agile to breed her in such a way that it will go after the female very fast but if they are staying together they get too familiar most times they don't even cross yes and also a lot of people think maybe they are, the rabbits have heat period that you need to cross them in, in their heat period whereby that's when they are going to get pregnant rabbits have heat period yes but whether they are on heat or they are not on heat they can still get pregnant yes just taking your female in your male cage if she does not accept the normal breeding then you can first breed her and you start having your babies so after making your cages and getting your rabbits the next thing you need to look out for is your feed your feed is very very important when you want to start up your rabbit farm and also the kind of rabbit you are getting is very very important most rabbit farmers when they are starting up they do source for very cheap rabbit breeds very cheap rabbit breeds when you tell them price of the hybrid maybe the price of the hybrid might be too high for them they will go and source for this uh, local rabbit that don't grow very very fast so if you are starting up your rabbit farm and you think maybe you are not uh you don't have the capital to start up with the good breeds it's better you wait and make sure you start up with the best breeds because 
even if you get the local breeds, as time goes on, you still want to change it because they are not fast growing. Let's take for instance one of these rabbits here that I'm going to be showing you. Let's take for instance if, the, if this rabbit is a local breed, this particular one. Let's take for instance the rabbit is a male. Let's take for instance if this rabbit is a local breed. This rabbit is like six months old. It's getting to six months now. In a local breed rabbit, at uh, six months, you'll be struggling with 1.5 kg or so. You'll be struggling with getting 1.5 kg at six months. But this rabbit here is more than 2 kg. This rabbit is getting to up. This rabbit should be up to 3 kg because the last time I actually weighed it, it was 2 kg plus. But if it is a local breed, if it is a local breed, you'll be struggling with getting 1.5 kg. You'll be struggling 800 grams to 1.5 kg. That's what you'll be struggling with. So I'll, I'll prefer you get a hybrid rabbit, spend more to get a hybrid rabbit that is fast growing. Within three to four months, you can get mid-sized rabbits from good hybrids within three to four months. But with the local breeds, you'll be struggling with getting mid-sized within six to seven months. So you can see the time difference, very, very long. So make sure you get a hybrid. Another reason why you should get a good hybrid rabbit is because good hybrid rabbits sell a lot. As you guys know, most of these rabbits are very, very rampant. Like the New Zealand white, you might be seeing it almost everywhere. New Zealand, New Zealand, New Zealand, everyone has a New Zealand white. But you don't know, New Zealand whites have a lot of different categories. They, they are the dwarf breeds, they are the medium breeds, then they are the high breeds and also the pure breeds. Most people search for New Zealand, they just think New Zealand because they say New Zealand is the best meat, meat rabbit. You just go and search for New Zealand and buy it and put it inside your farm. When you don't know that this particular New Zealand rabbit has what they call the high breeds, the medium breeds, the dwarf breeds, and also the pure breeds. If you are sourcing for New Zealand, make sure you source for the pure breeds New Zealand. If you have big rabbits in your farm, trust me, you won't have a problem with sales. Imagine I take out one rabbit that is at this size. Imagine I take out one rabbit that is at this size, as you can see the size of this male rabbit. Imagine I take it out at this size. A lot of people will want to get something similar to this in their rabbit farm. A lot of people will want to get something similar to this. So they are going to message you or call you and say, okay, I want to get the offspring of this particular rabbit. I want to get the offspring from this male rabbit. So sell it to me because they are big. But if you have the one that are really small, no one will be interested in buying those little, little ones. Yes, no one will be interested in buying those little ones. So. Another thing you need to get, after getting your cages and your rabbit fully set up, know the kind of grasses you need to feed your rabbit and the kind of feed you need to feed your rabbit. I have made a lot of videos on different kind of grasses that you can give your rabbit. You can go and check out any of these videos because one thing you need to know is that grasses have disadvantages to rabbit and grasses also have advantages to rabbit. You can't deny rabbit grasses because it has disadvantages because in the wild, Grasses is their main source of food, so you can't deny it to them. Once in a while, you need to give them grasses. But you know, as we have domesticated the rabbit into the cages, you, you cannot say you don't want to feed them fish because they will not be growing very, very fast. You cannot avoid fish. Rabbit feed make them grow very, very well. That's why you need to know a right formulation of feed to feed your rabbit so that your rabbits are going to be growing excellently well. So, make your rabbit cage, whether wooden or galvanized, Get the right breed of rabbit. Make sure it is high breed or pure breed. They are fast growing. Another thing, make sure you get the right feed for your rabbit. When you want to start up your rabbit farm, don't be scared of the buyers. When you have the right breed of rabbit, I assure you the buyers are going to come. When you have the right breed of rabbit and they are fast growing, you don't spend much with very little uh, amount of money you spend for the feed. Your, your rabbits are boosted to a very right size that you can sell for either meat or sell to fellow breeders or also sell to pets one thing i advise rabbit farmers that are starting up is that get variety don't say you want to get only new zealand that you want to focus on meat a lot of people say they want to focus on meat yes it's good maybe you want to focus your farm on meat but it's also advisable to get varieties so that in case someone that wants for pets can come maybe you can get the angoras or the dutchies because they look nice for pets someone that wants for pets can come to your farm Someone that wants for meat can come to your farm also and say, okay, I need the New Zealand since they are very good for meat. Someone that wants for another thing can also come. So get varieties because if a rabbit farmer wants to source rabbit from your farm, 
They will definitely look for varieties. I need the chinchilla, I need the angora, I need the New Zealand, I need the Dutch, I need the palominos, I need the checker giants, I need the standard chinchillas and all of that. Those definitely look for varieties. So it's better you get varieties, don't just get one breed, particular breed in your farm. Although some farm focus on the New Zealand, some farm focus on the California. I'm not saying it's bad, but I prefer the advice I'm giving you. I prefer you get varieties in your farm. That way, anyone who is looking for any kind of rabbit, they are going to definitely have a sale from that particular um, person. So, your cages, your rabbits, your feet, then your feeder definitely you need to get it. So, I hope I've been able to explain some few things to you guys in this particular video. Um, I'm going to be making other videos concerning rabbit farming. We have a lot of videos here in this channel that can teach you how to start a successful rabbit farm. So for those of you guys who need the nipple drinkers, the rabbit nipple drinkers, we now have them very available. If you need them in packs, we can actually send them down to your location anywhere in Nigeria. You just call my number down here on the screen and I'm going to send it down to you. So thank you guys for watching. Do have a nice day. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell so that when we post another video on rabbit farming, you are going to get notified. Thank you once again guys. Do have a nice day and peace out.